Today I'm going to be talking about heaps. Uh, heaps are a pretty simple data structure. They're binary heaps. Um, they're basically a binary tree of some sort where each node has two children. The shape of the heap is, is very nice for a binary tree. It's a perfect sort of complete binary tree. Well, if you have so many nodes, a count of nodes where the last level isn't exactly complete, uh, that's fine. The last level will be filled in exactly from the left. So the shape of the tree is always the, the shape of the heap is always going to be something like this. Um, another important property is, in this case I'm dealing with a max heap. If you look, the value stored at each node is larger than the value in either of its children. So 45 is larger than both 33 and 3. 33 is larger than both 17 and 25. And on the other hand, there's no, uh, we don't know anything about left child versus right child. So 33, the left child can be bigger than three, the right child. Uh, 25, a right child can be bigger than 17, a left child. In this case, you can even get sort of a node way down here on a low level, having a higher value than a node quite high in the tree. Um, but it's not a direct ancestor, okay? So those are the two properties that we're gonna have for a binary max heap. Each node has value larger than the value, larger or equal to than the value of each of its children. And the shape of the tree is this perfectly balanced binary tree, okay? So because the tree has such an explicit shape, unlike a binary search tree or something, you don't have to explicitly represent nodes. You don't have to sort of say, oh, here's a node and here's its left child and here's its right child and maybe the node would then have to have a pointer to its parent. You don't need that because the, the, node, the tree is so regular, we could just say, you know what, I'm going to store the root of the tree in the first position of an array. It's left and right children, I'll store in the next two positions of the array and then sort of take nodes in that order. Just read off from le left to right at each level. So I got 45, 33, 3, 17, 25, negative 34, negative 55, 4, 14. I just stick those into an array and I know, hey, three. What's three's children? Well, node three has as children, one, two, three, has as its children the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh positions, okay? And node three's parent is in, in the first position of the array, okay? So we can sort of formalize that and say, if we're indexing from one, then the index of a node's left child is twice its index. If the index of its right child is one more than that, and the index of its parent is the index div two. Okay. Of course, you can index from zero, it just sort of knocks everything over by one, that's fine, but here we have this nice implicit array representation of a heap where you don't have to have references or pointers to other nodes, okay? So great. Next thing to think about is how do we insert? How do we insert into a heap? So I have this heap and I know what the shape of the heap will be like after I insert something. I could imagine I insert the shape is gonna be like this. I have an extra node and it's gotta be filled in from the left. So the shape's gonna be like that. And I fill in something, I fill in whatever it is that I'm inserting. So in this case, if I'm inserting a 22, there you go, I insert it and it's there. And this 22 is the left child of the 25 node, even though it's hard to tell that. Uh, okay, so great. The other thing that we have to worry about, of course, is each node has to have as a parent, can, can have a value no larger than its parent, right? A parent has a value at least as large as children. In the case of this 22, we're fine, right? 22 isn't bigger than 25, so we're fine, we're done, we move on. Okay, now we're gonna insert a different value. We're gonna insert a 39. Well, in this case, we see, we know its position, we know where it's sort of what the heap should look like. We just try to insert it there and everything looks good except 39's parent has a value smaller than 39. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swap 39 with its parent. 
And now, great, 39 and its children look good. But of course, 39 still could be bigger than its parent. Well, I'm going to swap it with its parents. I'm going to just keep on moving it up the heap until finally, oh, 39 compares to 45. 39 is smaller than 45. So we're done. We look good. That's pretty much how you insert. The fact that you know exactly what the heap is going to look like after insertion helps you. OK, so what's next? Next, we want to delete. So let's say we get really lucky, and we want to delete this 25, and it's the last node in the heap. Great, we just delete it. Because we know that's the shape of the heap after deletion, right? And that's how you delete. Well, all right, it's not quite how you delete. What happens if you want to delete some other value? Well, if you want to delete another value, like in this case I say, oh, I want to delete 45, the maximum value in the heap. Want to delete 45? What I really wish is that I was deleting 22, because I know how to delete 22. I just get rid of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap 45 and 22. Okay, Put 45 in that position that I know how to easily delete, and then I delete it. And everything's great, except, well, 22 is now just sort of stuck in this position. Now, I know that everything to the left of 22 looks good as a heap. In fact, if you have a valid heap, any subtree of that heap is a heap. In this case, 22's right child is also a good heap. So what happens is 22 is this parent that shouldn't really be there, but its left child is a valid heap, its right child is a valid heap, and all I want to do is, in this case, move 22 down until it doesn't cause any problems anymore. So it calls this the uh, max heapified. So in this case, I say, hey, 22 has to move down. First, I compare 22 to its left child. 39 is larger, OK? So I want to move it down to the larger of its two children. In this case, uh, 39 was larger, so I'm going to compare 39 against 3. And I say, oh, 39 is bigger than 3. 39 is bigger than 22. 39 is the biggest of the three nodes. So I'm going to swap 22 with 39. And then, hey, 39's children are smaller than it. And sort of 39's entire right subtree looks great. But 22 still could be causing problems. So here I'm going to cause, tr compare 22 to its left child. Um, 22 is bigger than the left child. Then I can compare 22 against 33. I don't have to compare 17 against 33 because I know 22 is bigger than 17. In this case, I compare 22 against 33. 33 is bigger. They swap. And now 22 is where it's supposed to be. There's nowhere further for it to go down. In this case, it's reached a leaf, so it stops. OK, one more deletion example to sort of show you what can happen. Uh, the other thing that can happen. Suppose that 55, this negative 55 value in 14, negative 55 is what you want to delete. And of course, you wish that you were deleting 14 because that's so easy to delete. So you swap them. Then you delete your negative 55 value. And now, you see, before I had this value that had to move down. In this case, I have a value that actually has to move up. 14 has a value larger than its parent's value. That's not legal. So in this case, it kind of looks like insertion. This 14 might have to move up in the tree until it's finally smaller than whatever its parent is. Or maybe it could end up at the root. So in this case, 14 moves up. And then 14 compares against 39. 14 is smaller. And it's good. All right. So we see here, that's what, that's what happens with deletion. You either delete and you're fine, or the node might have to move down, or it might have to move up. It'll never have to move down and up. Either it's uh, a value larger than its parent after swapping, and, and maybe it would have to move up. Or it's a value smaller than its children, and it would have to move down to the larger of the children until it gets down to doesn't have to move down anymore. Or it's fine wherever it ended up. Um, okay. So look, because this is a perfectly balanced binary tree, uh, the height of the heap for n nodes is order log n. When you want to insert, you insert at the bottom, and it moves up to at most the top of the tree. And for each level that it moves up, you just compare against the parent and then swap if you need to. 
So that's worst case time log, auto login for insertion. To delete, you do this sort of swap, and then it either moves up or moves down. If it moves up, just like, just like insertion, takes auto login at worst case. If it moves down, well, maybe you have to do two different comparisons to move down a level, but that's still a constant time, so logarithmic time for deletion. The only thing that I've sort of swept under the carpet here is when you want to delete, we're assuming that you're given a reference to the node that you're going to delete. Um, and I'll come back to that later, but that's it for part one. Thank you.